Hey guys, Garth Camel ADV. Um, one of the cool things I like about my job is I have access to um, all these tools and, and things. I have, I have suppliers and stuff that I can get cool stuff from. And when I have these really weird thoughts, uh, I can do something about it. Um, and something I've been curious about uh, with bikes, a lot of people talk about how top heavy a bike is and, oh, that bike's a top heavy piece of shit. And this one's way better because the tanks are down low and that one's up top and it's stupid and, you know, whatever. Um, I like numbers and, and you can do a lot with the seat of your pants, kind of like, how does it feel? Uh, and I decided that I wanted to have some sort of mechanism to um, check the, the top heaviness of, of adventure bikes. I'm just really curious. And uh, so it's been, a bit of a, it's been a bit of a challenge to figure out how to do that. Um, and had a few, had a few different ideas. Uh, we've got an overhead crane at the shop here, um, which is really cool because uh, we can do all kinds of stuff with bikes. And um, I'm, I've been trying to figure out this mechanism on how to, how to measure top heaviness. And it's been like months. It's been like eight months, nine months that it's been in my head. And we started kind of working on it about six months ago. And I've hit some roadblocks um, and kind of have recruited some friends to give me a hand with it. And we still have some questions. We're still not really in agreement on how to go about testing this. So my original idea was we've got the overhead crane and then we've got a digital scale. So if we set up a post with a pulley, then we have the rope from the crane coming down through the pulley. And then we have the scale and we tip the bike over and at a prescribed distance, let's say 20 degrees, then we look at it and we go, oh, at 20 degrees, this 2022 KLR with a full tank of fuel pulls this hard on scale. And then we roll in on our 1200GS and we measure it. And then we do a 790 and then we do a T7 and we do all the bikes we can get our hands on um, to measure it. But we need to make sure that those measurements are accurate and everything is repeatable. Um, and that's kind of where the challenge comes in. So I have recruited my, um, my shop foreman and my fabricator, Matt, to give me a hand with it. And I'm gonna, well, we'll just kind of chat a little bit here about um, what we looked at and why we didn't go that way and kind of the direction we're going. And I'm, I'm asking you guys for, for, your, uh, for your input on this to make sure that when we're doing this, we're actually getting accurate information that's kind of useful. I'm, I'm hoping at the end that we will have tested enough bikes that we can have a spreadsheet and basically you can go down and you can go, oh, this bike is, has the same top heaviness as that bike, even though they weigh completely different. Um, and you know, I'm 5'4 and 120 pounds and I don't want a top heavy bike. And I know that I feel comfortable on this bike and it's got an index number of whatever. And oh shit, that bike also does. So maybe that's a good one for me to look at. Um, it's just kind of a fun thing to do. There's obviously no way we're making money on this. It's just um, kind of an idiotic project that I wanted to do. So this is Matt, he's a shop foreman. Um, he is a 30 year journeyman welder um, and a TIG master, whether it's aluminum or stainless, super impressive stuff. And has a background in fabrication for oil and gas and all kinds of different things. So uh, lots, of, lots of good ideas, lots of experience. So he's a good guy to tap for some information here um, or thoughts. So originally we were going to um, just tip bikes. When we tip the bike, uh, at some point it's gonna slide out. And we have a problem if it's on knobby tires or if it's on street tires that are worn and the tires kind of squared off. When it leans over, it's at a weird, it's kind of at a weird angle. And I know this all sounds really trivial. Um, and you're going, well, is it really gonna affect the number? Um, and it might affect it in a, in a meaningful way, and it might not. I don't yeah. know. But it was something that we wanted to uh, take out of, the, out of the equation. So when we're looking at tipping the bike just on the concrete and using a pulley and the rope, we just kind of didn't... We don't know where to pull from. We don't know where the, yeah, the actual point where we pull on every bike. Is it the same? The height, the leverage, everything. Everything so. is different. So that's, that is, yeah, the other big issue is if we're going to tip the bike, where are we, we've got the scale here and then up to the pulley. So we're tipping it, you know, that way, where do we attach? Yeah. So on, on one bike, um, maybe there's exposed frame rail here that we can tie around, but on the next bike, say it's a 
KTM 990 that has the big tanks and everything, and there's nowhere to grab onto. And the next bike, you know, there's, there's a tube that's available up here, and the next one's down there. So that's something that's really important too, because of course, where we're, where we're pulling from um, and pulling on the scale, because of leverage, that number changes. So Matt and I kind of had different thoughts on this. I was like, well, I think we need to be pulling at the same, at the same height on every bike so it's all even. And you kind of thought handlebar height. Yeah, yeah, because I, the thought there was is that as your bike's falling over, you're, you're pulling it back up by the handlebar, right? And you're trying to, so we want to know at what point do you blow a nut, right? right? <laughs> we, we went back and forth on this and, and Matt and I argue a lot um, <laughs> about shit, but we, we kind of refer to it as a loud discussion. So yes. this ended up being a very loud yeah. discussion. Uh, <laughs> so my thought was you have a heavier bike and it's taller. So that's more top heavy. That is, I mean, that's the definition of being more top heavy. The higher the weight is, the more top heavy it is. And then to say, well, if you put bar risers on it, then the bars are taller. So you have more leverage. So it acts lighter, but I don't know. I don't, uh, yeah. I, 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 I can't wrap my head around that. So like, I don't, like expand if you can, because I don't. <laughs> I can't. I, I, yes, originally, definitely thinking that that is the place to, to measure the load. Um, but all sorts, of, all sorts of different things, like Corey was saying, you know, the height of the bike, the length of the bars could have an effect on it, and the tires. We just don't know. We just, so we, were, we are trying to find a way that we can standardize this in the central pull. But how do we support the bike? Do we bolt something onto the bike? What do we make to put onto every bike so everything's the same so we can get accurate data all the time from the bike? And this is where we've been arguing or having these healthy discussions for six months, six, months, six months or more. Months. This is the big problem, um, uh, figuring out where to do it and how to attach it to the bike so it's, it's even on all the bikes. And so for a brief amount of time, I thought about making this is standard-ish. I mean, you would have to do different widths and different spacing here um, to make a post that you could bolt on here. And then we could potentially pull off the bars. Um, and if it had a telescopic sleeve on it so we could set a standardized height, then that might accomplish what we want to do. So I think the pull needs to be lower though. It needs to be standard. Like we can't switch it based on how tall the bike is yeah. Like, is it a tall seat bike? Is it a short seat bike? Like, I mean, you can ride a much heavier bike, but if it has a short seat, um, yeah. it's a lot easier to keep it up, which is my problem with the handlebar argument, mm -hmm. right? The same bike, if we had a low seat for this and it was, you know, three inches lower, or four inches lower, whatever you could get out of that, the weight of the, the weight of the bike isn't changing, but it's easier to handle. So... What do you do? Yeah. We've got straps down. We've got the bars straight ahead or, or damn close to straight. Um, and then okay. we want to, we want to use the overhead crane and the scale. Where do we hook to? But, so we got to tip the bike, but where do we hook to in here? So we could hook here. That would work on this bike. But then we go over to the Pan America, and that tube isn't, doesn't exist. I mean, we could, I don't know, maybe hook to that tube, but that's way lower. There's nothing up here. We're obviously not pulling off the exhaust. Maybe we could pull off the crash bar, but then we're, there's too many variables. To keep it fair, it seemed like we needed um, an actual apparatus we were going to have to something to standardize every bike so every bike rolls the same right right how do we do that and like the width of the back tire like this has got a 130 what's the what's the it, one on the harley well, i don't know 170 maybe mm. 80 i don't even know what it is it's, it's probably it's probably an inch and a half wider than that so um all of these small things could really make a huge difference in what this number ends up being so we have made this really weird apparatus here um, for tipping bikes. <laughs> so 
<laughs> so this is the uh, this is the skeleton of the I don't know what are we going to call this the camel bike lean index I I don't know yet I don't know we haven't figured it out yet <laughs> so we've got a chunk of six inch C channel uh, that's about eight feet long and then we've got three pillow blocks in it and the spuds that the pillow blocks are attached to. This is this is the level that we went down the rabbit hole on this. Um, the, the center line of this is on the top of this because that's where the tire is contacting. If we had centered this on here, it wouldn't be an, an accurate number. If we had put the pillow blocks and the spuds underneath here, that wouldn't be an accurate number. So we're Pretty much sweating the details here, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. And it, and this all may seem super trivial, and maybe at the end of the day, none of it matters. I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah. Like we could do this, and then somebody could go, uh, "Yeah, I did it with a two by four in my garage, and I got the same numbers." I don't know. I just, I want repeatability. Yeah. I just, yeah. I wanted. We were slow in the shop, and we're like, "Let's build a thing." So and this is the this thing. is the thing. Um, so obviously we've got a leg there. We've got these two arms and the idea is that we're able to strap the bike in with these two arms with, with ratchet straps to keep the bike centered and it's going to tip. It's going to tip that way, which that's 45 degrees. So <laughs> when we do this, like 45 degrees with the adventure bike, um, unless you're, you know, world's strongest man competitor type dude or girl, you're dropping the bike at 45 degrees. There's not very many people that can hold a full-size adventure bike up at 45 degrees. What do we got? About 46. 40, 46 yeah. degrees. I think that's a, a an irrelevant number, because like I said, if you're at 45 degrees, I think you've the, already lost it. The, bike is, the bike's laying down or you've blown your back out. But I think 20 or 25 is a pretty accurate number, or not accurate, but it's, it's a relevant number. Yeah. We're gonna huck the KLR on here and then we'll show you what we've come up with for a way to attach the bike to the apparatus um, that should be repeatable on most bikes. Well, this is so far the best we can come up with. And like I said, we're looking for feedback on this. So if you have any thoughts and you go, hey dude, why didn't you just do it this way? Probably because I didn't think of it. Yeah, exactly. Because we went down the rabbit hole and we, you know, and maybe over this direction, there's a better solution. And if there is, I'd love to hear it. I kind of forgot one of the key reasons for doing this. The top heaviness of a bike, but we're going to lean the bike at like 20 and then 45 just for fun um, with a full tank. But we're also gonna put luggage on here. Uh, we're going to we're gonna put a, a, pers a set of soft bags on here that has the same amount of weight for every bike so that we can show you when you load your bike and you put 40 pounds or 50 pounds of gear um, how much, how much harder, how much more top heavy it is, is it when you do that? And then a top box, it'll probably be a milk crate because that's just easier to, <laughs> well, it's, it's, not, KL, it's KLR it's, after it's, all. It actually wasn't a KLR joke. It was just, um, <laughs> that's what happens to be on here, but we'll have a milk crate that has a standard amount of weight in it and we'll put it on here and you'll see, uh, the difference when you have however much, 20 pounds or whatever yeah. on uh, your tail rack, the difference it's going to make in the pull. And I can guess um, kind of roughly what I think it's going to be. And it's going to be interesting to see what the math actually says, what the numbers actually say, which is why I really like this. Because you have somebody who has a top box and they have a rota packs on each side and then they have their spare tire on the back of it and whatever in the, in the top box and everyone can load their stuff however they like. But I want to know, like, I want, I want the numbers that go along yeah. with that. I think that's really interesting. And maybe you do, or maybe you were like, this is the dumbest thing ever. See ya later, bitch. I don't know. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to get as many new bikes as we can. We're going to try and do all the popular um, adventure bikes. We're going to try and get a hold of some of the dealers uh, so that they can show up uh, with new bikes mm -hmm. and we can, we can have a tip off. Yeah. I think it's going to be awesome. So we're going to go from the foot peg and a strap over and take the seat off, but a strap there and down to there. And then a strap from that foot peg over here. So we've got a 
crisscrossing of straps so the bike can't lean this way and it can't lean that way. It leans with the apparatus. Yeah, it turns. Everything must turn with the jig. Everything must. Now, that being said, the, we're going to be putting uh, a degree finder. What do you, what's, the, what's, what's the actual word I'm looking for here? Angle finder? Angle finder, degree finder. I'm sure, pro, Lean angle indicator? Pro, protractor. What am I? Uh, pro, no, not really protractor. I'd say lean and what? Something anyway, like whatever. That. Anyway, whatever. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll cut the right word in, in, in text on the title of the video. Um, and we will stick it on the <laughs> rear brake rotor. Um, that is the spot on any bike that will tell you exactly how much it's leaned. You could put, you could put an angle gauge on luggage. You could put, put it up here, but maybe this plate isn't, maybe the subframe slightly tweaked or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. There's lots of places that aren't good, but if you want to know actually what the angle of the bike is, we do this when we're, when we're building parts. We need to know that the bike is straight up and down. And we always go uh, off the rotor. And we go off the rotor. It's just the best place to do it. Yeah. So, so even if, like right now, the bike is kind of sitting cockeyed in the jig. The jig's leaning that way and the bike straight up. But because we're going to have the degree uh, finder on the bike rather than on the jig, um, if the bike and the jig are a few degrees out, it's not gonna matter. So that's a problem too. What's that? Our arms pulling in when we tighten that up. Yes. So we've got these two unsupported arms we got the two unsupported arms, and when we tighten the straps down, they pull in. So um, we've got sleeves that slide down here, and then there's going to be a bar, and they come up at a 45, and then a 45, and a 45, and a 45, back there, so that when we tighten down the straps, they don't er, pull together. Again, in an attempt to make this as repeatable as possible. Yes. Um, so the bike's totally tweaked here right now. We've got to adjust that angle. So the bike's kind of messy right now. Uh, it's got to go a long way to you. Let's see. Within a degree. Okay. So we've got to come up with some sort of V-block for the front because some of these bikes are going to have a skinny 21 and some of them, like the Pan America, are going to have a big fat 19. Uh, so we need to make sure that the wheel is straight and centered again to be accurate we also thought about making a um like a mm, what would you call it like a soft bumper on the end of a, a bar so that we could slide them in and pinch the bike in between the two and tighten those off right so again on on the klr like we could have had uh, a screw kind of like um, you have on the wheel clamps right or a vice like an acme thread kind of thing here uh, and a bumper that leans up against that. But again, not every bike, some of the bikes have bodywork there. Yeah. So we're, we're leaning 500 pound bikes and we're pushing on the bodywork with this bumper um, and we're gonna do damage to them. And how much damage, I don't know, but most of them aren't going to be our bikes, so it does matter. Uh, and we have to come up with something a little bit better here um, because we are squeezing this plastic so we're going to have to come up with some sort of something that keeps that from happening. Um, again, it's our shop KLR, so I'm not really bothered by it. Uh, but if, if friends are bringing their brand new $30,000 bikes over so we can test them, then I don't want to be scratching their stuff up. So if you have any thoughts about that, by all means, let us know. There's a better way to, to secure the bikes in here um, universally yeah then by all means so uh 300 rally um we have a spot here we could tie to or we could put a put a bar to or a bumper but t7 there's plastic here we could hit that but the width of that and the height are completely different and then something like this uh, yeah there's nowhere on this really no <laughs> yeah yeah, you're not going to really get anything around there. So this is what we have so far. I don't know whether it's um, a good execution of a shitty idea or it's 
shitty execution of a great idea. <laughs> or maybe it's shitty execution of a shitty idea. Or great execution of a great idea. I have no idea. Um, but we're moving forward. One of, one of my favorite sayings is ready, fire, aim. Um, and so I just, that's a lot of the stuff that happens in the shop. I have a bit of an idea and then I just start working on it and it kind of takes shape as we go. So that's... That's kind of what this has been. That's kind of what this has been. So uh, we'd love to hear your comments if you have any ideas about uh, where to pull from. This is still kind of... Yeah. This is still messing with my head a bit. Um, if you have a mechanical engineering background or a strong physics background and you go, well, obviously you got to pull from here. Let, let us know. <laughs> let us know because I don't know if there is a right answer or I don't know whether it's going to be different on every bike. That seems weird. Or whether it's got to be the same on every bike. And if it's the same on every bike, then it shouldn't really matter the height as long as it's always. It's my, yeah, my favorite saying, we don't know what we don't know. We don't, that's the, we don't know a lot. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the situation here. So yes, uh, welcome your, your comments. Um, and yeah, help us out. Help us figure this out. Yeah. Anything? Nope. I'm working on three hours sleep today. I don't have anything witty to say other than thank you for watching and check us out next time when we do other stupid shit in the shop. Ho <laughs> 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 oh, oh, my, that was fun. That was fun. Right, I, I really, I like doing video. Like, yeah. I enjoy it. Most days.